Hello everyone and welcome to Black Star Potential. My name is Lee Fuge and I'm here today with musicteacher.com. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the St. James plugin and talking about the EQ module at the end of the chain. We're gonna be looking at what this EQ module does and how you can best use it when dialing in your guitar tone. So inside the St. James plugin, you can actually apply a lot of EQ changes to the amp directly as if you were actually setting up a real amp. This is where the majority of your fine tuning of your tone is gonna take place. This is where you're gonna set up the basic tone that you're actually gonna use as your guitar sound. Combined with the speaker choice and the microphone choice, that sort of becomes the sound that you create. Now, you may be wondering what this section does, and this is the output EQ. So we can think of this as the final step in the recording chain. So this actually comes after everything else in the chain. So you've got your pre-effects, your amp, your cabinet, your post effects, and then the EQ. This EQ is actually based off a really famous studio rack EQ unit. So you could think of this as actually the studio EQ that's being applied to the microphone sound because it's so late in the chain, we're actually going from the speaker into the microphone through our post effects, then into the EQ. So this is the final, final step in your tone shaping process. Now, if you actually find that before you hit this stage, you're happy with your sound, you can simply just turn that off. But if you wanna do some final last minute tweaking to give your guitar that finished studio ready sound, this EQ block is going to help you do that. Now, one thing to consider is when you're actually recording your guitar in your studio setting, this EQ block will actually take the place of any post EQ that you might do in your DAW. So think of this as exactly the same thing. This is the overall EQ that we're applying to our fully set up guitar rig. So inside this block, we have four semi-parametric bands, a low cut and a high cut. So we can do a lot of different tweaking here. What I would always suggest is not seeing this EQ block as somewhere to fix any problems with your tone. This is where you can apply those last minute changes. But if you've got problems with the tone, you should address it at this stage so that this stage, you don't really want to be doing anything too extreme. Each one of these bands, you can have a 15 dB boost or cut. And at the top here, we have a four position selector switch for different frequencies across the spectrum as well. You can actually turn these off as well by doing that. So if you actually only want to affect one particular range, you can just turn that one on as needed. The low cut is what we're going to be able to use to shave off anything up to 200 hertz. So that will get rid of any unwanted extra boominess in the low end. The high cut is the opposite. So this actually works in reverse. So when the high cut is set to full, it's not coming into any effect. And as we bring this down, you see the frequency number in the top decreasing. And that's like the high cut off for what our frequency is doing. So we can bring that all the way down to a thousand hertz if we want, or we can leave it up at 20 and have the full spectrum range available. Across the four bands, we can cut or boost different EQ ranges. So we can have 50, 80, 100, or 150. And then we've got the low mids, which is 250, 500, 1K, or 2K. The high mids, which is 3K, 5K, 7K, and 9K. And the highs, which is 11K, 13, 15, and 18k. Now you're probably not going to be doing too much boosting up around 18k unless you really want to make a guitar part be very very bright. Where you're probably going to be doing most of your EQ is going to be this low and high mid range maybe at around 11 or 13 if you want to add a bit of extra air to your sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move a couple of different parameters while playing just to show you the sort of EQ tweaks that they make. I'm going to show you some extreme cut and boosts and show you why that's not a good idea to do as well. So I've just got a kind of medium gain overdrive tone using the St. James 6R6 amp dialed in, which sounds like this. That's what we're gonna be using as our basis of EQ. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the low cut. This is gonna sweep off any unwanted lows. So I'm gonna start by playing and I'm just gonna gradually sweep that off. So as a guitar player, you're probably not going to be taking off everything up to 200 hertz. That's going to take off way too much of your low end. Where a lot of guitar players will set their low cut is somewhere between maybe 60 and 100. 
that just cleans up the low end. So I'm going to set it to 80 here. So I've still got plenty of low end body, but I've just cleaned up all that extra low frequency stuff that I don't need. The same is true of the high cut, but obviously this works in reverse, so we can shave off the high frequencies down to 1000 Hertz. You're probably not going to want to do that because that's going to be a really extreme cut, but it's going to sound like this. <laughs> So you can hear why you wouldn't want to set that high cut all the way down. What you'll probably find as a best practice is setting this at around 10 to maybe 13K is a good range. Now, obviously this is gonna be dependent on your own sound, but a lot of guitar players will go for that range because that is sort of the higher end of what we mostly hear with the guitar. And then also it frees up a little bit of additional space for things like cymbals in a mix and the real kind of airy and breathiness of a lead vocal. So this is a pretty good place to set your high cut. What you'll probably find is if it's much higher than that, you won't notice a huge difference. It's kind of like a subtle high end roll off, but it makes a big difference in a mix situation. And then we go into the individual frequency bands. Now you can use these bands to fine tune different parts of your guitar's tonal spectrum. Like I said, you're probably not gonna to want to do any extreme boosts or cuts like this because that's gonna give you all kinds of weird problems. So in the low, you can boost anything from 50 up to 150. That's not exclusively going to boost that one frequency. It's gonna bring the things around it up and down slightly as well. So I'm gonna set this to 80. I'm going to show you what happens if I boost and cut this. So you can hear there why I wouldn't want to do those extreme EQ moves. The same is true for any other EQ band. You don't want to be boosting and cutting things like this. because that's gonna give you some really strange, really intense EQ spikes, which you definitely want to avoid. Now this section I would always recommend using very, very subtly. So once you've got your low cut dialed in at let's say 75 Hertz, cause that's a pretty good place to start, or 72.2, and then your high cut is dialed back to about 13K, that's a pretty good starting point for a guitar tone. <laughs> can now use this EQ to just make it sit a little better in the mix. So what I might find is if I've got a kick drum that has a big resonance at about 80 to 100 hertz, I might want to just bring the lows down slightly, maybe only 2 dB, you don't want to go too extreme here. And then in the lower mids, that's where the guitar gets a lot of its body. So anywhere from 500 to 1K is a pretty good place to boost up those lower mids. So I'm gonna go for 500, I'm just gonna bring it up 3 dB. Can you hear a big difference there? It just fattens it up. The high mid is where we get a lot of the bite and the attack from the guitar. I personally always find that three to 5K is a good place to boost this. If you boost the two to 3K region too much in the middle, you get a bit too much of a nasally sound. But if you're boosting from sort of 3 to 5k, you get a little bit more attack. So I'm going to bring 5k up a bit. So that's got a little bit more attack to it. But if I felt that was too bright, I would do the opposite thing and just bring it down slightly. That's going to soften the attack. <laughs> 
And then the highs, that's where the real kind of top end detail lives. So if I boost anywhere from 11 to 13K, I'm gonna get a nice kind of little lift at the top end. Now, if you're using a high cut, you're not really gonna be wanting to boost 18K because you're kind of boosting a lift to your high cut. You're gonna get some really strange results. But sticking within the boundaries of what your high cut is doing is a nice way just to open up some detail at the top end. <laughs> So like I said, you don't want to do anything too extreme here. Now, the cool thing is you don't actually have to use all of these EQ bands. If all I wanted to do was use the low and high cut, just to tidy my tone up and give a little bit of a low mid bump, I could turn off the low, the high mid and the high, and then I've just got control over the low mids. <laughs> could use this as just a high cut so I could turn everything else off and just have my high cut in place. The cool thing is there's no rules about how you use this EQ block but really it's not something that's designed to be used in a really intense and extreme way. Use this as a subtle way just to fine-tune the final stages of your guitar tone. Get your guitar tone with this block turned off then turn it on and slowly make little adjustments just to give your guitar that final polished sheen so it's ready for recording. This is a great way just to put that final bit of finish on all the hard work you've done designing your tone up to this point. So there you go, that is the EQ block in the St. James plugin. Let me know down below how you guys are using this block and what you're using it for in your own presets. Love to hear how you guys are applying your own EQ to your toes. Thank you all so much for watching as always. Don't forget to check out Black Star Amplification on YouTube for more free videos just like this. And let me know down below in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see us talking about within the St. James plugin. If you're looking for a guitar teacher in your local area, please check out musicteacher.com. There's a huge network of teachers all around the country waiting to help you guys out. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you very soon.